All right, so today I want to talk a little bit about Mesopotamia. And to start off, Mesopotamia means literally between two rivers. And the two rivers that are being referenced here are the Tigris and the Euphrates. And Mesopotamia is sort of situated near the Persian Gulf in what is now modern day Iraq would be a large portion of Mesopotamia. And the Fertile Crescent, a term which is frequently used, actually is pointing to the fact that the Tigris and the Euphrates meet down by the Persian Gulf, but if you were to follow them north up towards southern Turkey and then continuing west all the way to the Mediterranean and then wrapping south back down almost to the Red Sea, so almost coming into Egypt. That is the old territory of the Fertile Crescent, which was extremely important for Neolithic farmers. It was a, a very abundant land that lent itself to crops and cultivation and domestication of animals, all things which helped to move us away from a hunter-gatherer society in more of a Paleolithic situation uh, to Neolithic farming. So Mesopotamia really doesn't become a major civilization until about 4,000 to 3,000 BC is when you see the rise of cities. So ancient Sumer would be the first of the major civilizations to take shape in the Mesopotamian region. So, what's important though about Sumeria is that it's to Sumeria that we look for the beginning of writing. Now, scholars have debated who really started officially writing stuff down. And it's not completely clear yet. There's still plenty of arguments. Um, however, most people are going to say that it was started in Mesopotamia with ancient uh, Sumer culture and going back roughly to between 3400 and 3000 BCE, so before the Common Era, um, we have early pictographs. So I have some put up here on the board that you can see. So these early, early signs meant to represent ideas. So at the top here we have this sort of pea-looking shape and it looks kind of like the head of a man with a mouth and that's exactly what it's supposed to represent as a pictograph so it is representing the head plus the mouth sign and then beneath it you have what clearly looks like a bowl and it's supposed to represent a bowl of food and the way this would work is over time once they created enough of these signs, these pictographs, you could combine some of them in order to articulate uh, more complex ideas, so certain verbs. So if you were to take the head sign and combine it with the mouth sign, or with the bowl of food sign, I should say, then what you would get would be the concept of eating. So, this sort of early idea, this beginning of writing that you found in pictographs is also found in the same general time frame in Egypt. So around 3200 BCE, roughly contemporary with what's going on, so paralleling what's happening in Mesopotamia, it is not clear that there was diffusion of ideas from Mesopotamia to Egypt pertaining to writing. There may have been, but it's quite possible that there was not, and that they just happened to develop uh, at the same time. And there are enough differences between the languages and the writing to suggest that they were distinct, but then at the same time, there's also a decent amount of parallels between them 
And so scholars are sort of back and forth. Um, the earliest example that we have in Egypt goes back to 3200 uh, BC, where we have about 250 to 300 of these clay seals with basic pictographs on them. So it's about just as old. And I actually have at the bottom here an example of an Egyptian hieroglyph. So this would be the sign. It's basically an oval shape with a line, one straight line underneath it. And that would be the sign for mouth. So. Now, in ancient Egyptian, when you would put a dash or a single stroke underneath or to the side of a sign, that would normally indicate that it's singular. So, one mouth in this case. But if you were to put another stroke underneath it, then you're referencing two. And then if you put a third, you're not necessarily at that point saying three. If you, have, if you would have three dashes, so frequently you'll see that when referencing people in some context, if you're reading something in ancient Egyptian. It just means that there's a plurality of people. So it's how you would make something plural rather than just strictly dual. So they're both the fascinating languages, fascinating forms of writing. They came about in Mesopotamia and Egypt. So the style of writing that you get in Mesopotamia becomes known as cuneiform, which comes from a Latin word which means wedge or wedge-shaped. And the reason for this was that the way they would actually write this down would be in this soft clay and they would use a reed stylus to make indentations and marks on this soft clay. And so the type of, of signs that you would get had a very distinct and unique look. So I'm not even going to attempt to draw something that's going to take too much time, but just to give you an idea, there'd normally be some sort of triangular shapes followed by a line going off in one way or another. So you may have something coming at all these different angles. And that's sort of the process of how all of this evolved. You started with pictographs. They would actually be these basic signs. They would represent what they look like. So you'd have a fish, and it would mean fish. Or you would have a head with a mouth, and it would mean exactly that, a face or head and mouth. And a bowl means a bowl. But then over time, you're combining these ideas. You're getting more things into the language and you're abstracting these symbols down. So that's what's actually happening here. You're going to take something like this right here, which means to eat, and then you're going to abstract it down into something that looks like this, more wedge-shaped. Because obviously the earlier pictographs aren't necessarily wedge-shaped at all. They're really just illustrating exactly what they're supposed to mean. So it's really a process. It's a whole system of evolution of writing. It wasn't something that just came on the scene at 3000 BCE and was fully formed. So it took thousands of years. And actually, cuneiform was in use pretty much all the way up until the Phoenician alphabet really started to take over from it. And it's completely gone by the turn of the Common Era. No one's using it anymore. So it's basically been a dead language for 2,000 plus years. And scholars didn't really crack it until the mid to late 1800s. And some of the things that we have learned, because that's really what matters here. Okay, so this is interesting, the evolution of writing, but we want to know what was actually written down. So what were these people trying to convey to us? And the most important thing would have to be the creation stories, the myths that were...